for tuning in. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you once again for giving us another opportunity to be in your presence. We ask that you forgive us of our sins, our iniquity, and our transgression. For at the psalmist say, only against thee do we sin and do evil in your sight. We invite your Holy Spirit here tonight, the Rock of Death, to lead us and guide us. We bless you. We thank you once again. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Amin, Amin. <sighs> Let's get into our class. Uh, we're going to deal with this evening, the sign of the covenant. Okay, the sign of the covenant. I think that one, uh, just based on my observation of uh, religion itself, based on church going, and just based on, uh, uh, what word I'm, I, I can say, just based on just church itself and just religion itself, that we have not been properly taught the Holy Scriptures. We, we ignore... Uh, we ignore uh, the beginning of the book, that is Genesis. Genesis go into details, details to explain to us who the people are. Uh, Genesis go into detail to tell you what genealogy that you come from. But most people ignore that because they are, they are reading the story of Adam and Eve or Hawa. They reading the story about Noah and the ark. Uh, they read in the story Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, they, you know, the Isaac, Abraham uh, uh, offered up Isaac. I mean, Joseph down in uh, uh, going to Egypt, and so they're caught up in reading the stories, but not understanding that the scripture is trying to lay down, is trying to lay down the genealogy for us, and so we have to pay attention that that the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kadesh goes through the book of Genesis to lay down the genealogy for us, but watch this here, because we ignore the genealogy and one of our excuses for, uh, and because I can fall in that same category and I do, uh, that we should say, well, man, can't nobody pronounce those words. And so because we say, because we can't pronounce some of the words and so we'll bypass the genealogy. But the genealogy is very important. It's very important. And so we talked about that Monday, and we looked at uh, the genealogy from the sons of Noah when they came off the ark, okay? When they came off the ark, it's very important. It's very important because this is where that the scripture is trying to focus on is going to be these three sons, okay? These three sons that the alarm or the world is going to be populated. And you would think that that uh, people would pay attention to Genesis chapter 10, but the enemy has done such a great job that we just bypass Genesis chapter 10 and then just jump into the story of Exodus and, and just go on, on and read and not understanding that, listen, the Holy Spirit spent this much time laying down the genealogy of the people in the book of Genesis, then we ought to take time out to find out who's who, so that when we get into the book of Exodus, then we'll know who's who, and throughout history, these people have not disappeared off the planet. But you need people that say, listen, I want to learn the scripture. I want to be taught so that I can know who's who. Very important. Case in point that when you go to the book, uh, uh, in the book of Galatians, and it says that, uh, uh, verse 329, it said, if you be in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. Now, ask the Irish person. You have to say, then, who is Abraham? Who is Abraham? So, so a person who never read Genesis, then wouldn't even know who Abraham is. Paul used allegories such as uh, Ishmael and, 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 and Isaac. Well, if you never read Genesis, then you wouldn't even know who Ishmael is or Isaac is. Very important. And so the enemy has done a, a, a good job, a good job in, 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 in distorting us from reading the very beginning of the book that is the book of Genesis. And so now we, watch this here, we have fallen into the category is that we say, well, we all God people. Well, the Bible does not teach that. The Bible does not teach that we all God people. The Bible does not teach that. 
Matter of fact, I'm going to show you a verse right away and just prove that. Go to exit, exit for a moment. Because we have to understand that, that the Holy Scripture is a book about a people. It's a book about a people that became a nation. A people that became a nation. Uh, let's look at, let's look at chapter 9. Okay. He says here, Exodus chapter uh, uh, 9, we'll pick it up in verse 13. No, 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 no. Exodus chapter 9, we'll pick it up in uh, for some context. Let's look at verse 1. Exodus chapter 9, verse 1, to show you that the Most High put a distinct between his people and the other people. Uh, verse uh, chapter 9, verse 1. Then Jehovah said to Moshe, Go into Pharaoh and tell him, Thus says Jehovah Elohim of uh, what? The Hebrews. Notice they're called the Hebrews. I did a teaching on that a few weeks ago. Okay. Let my people go that they may serve me. Verse 2 For if thou refuse to let them go and will hold them still, behold, the hand of Jehovah is upon the cattle which is in the field upon the horses, upon the, the donkeys or the ass, upon the camel, upon the ox, upon the sheep, and there shall be a various grievous marine. Why does it say Verse 4, and Jehovah shall serve between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of the Egyptian. Now notice that, that, that he used the same thing, that Yah is going to show you that, listen, these are the cattle of the Egyptian, and these are the cattle of my people. And many times in Exodus that, that he, made it, he made a distinct between his people and the other people. So Yah has a people. So don't let nobody tell you or somebody tell you that we are all God's people. No, we not. We are not. And Genesis is trying to lay that down to you. Very important. We're not all God's people. We're not. Who else is, is, is tuning in? Miss uh, uh, Elaine, uh, Miss Parker, still there? I can't see the other name. But guys, want to just thank you for tuning in. Now, in Genesis, okay, this is what I want you to see. In Genesis, uh, starting at chapter twelve through chapter uh, uh, 50, it deals with four people, four major people that Genesis is trying to bring out. The first person that they deal with was Abraham. And then it went from Abraham until Isaac, until Isaac to Jacob, right? So the Bible is interested in four people. We deal with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. It's trying to deal with the genealogy. So notice that that because I, I I'm I'm not going back over the, that you can uh, uh, check uh, when I did Monday I talked about the uh, uh, the genealogy how that the Most High out of the three sons of Noah Shem Ham and Japheth he chose the lineage of Shem that the Messiah would come through and he's not going to change he's he's not going to jump from from Shem to Ham you know to to Shem to Japheth no 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 he chose the lineage of Shem, where the Messiah will come through. That's the seed, okay? Very important. And when you look at Genesis, okay, when you look at Genesis, you'll see that it's about that seed. It's about the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Now, we talked about, I want to uh, 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 bring your attention to uh, Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. No, no, no. Let's start in Genesis chapter 12 first, okay? Just give you a little recap, okay? We know that the Most High, this is very important because it does not change to this very day. It has not changed. We know that after the flood, we have three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. We know in Genesis chapter 12 that the Most High called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. Am I right? So he chose Abraham to be the one where the Messiah will come through. Very important. This is all about Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. Okay? So now that we know that the seed, the one to come is going to come through a seed of the woman, 
but we didn't know who. But now we know that it's gonna it's gonna come through Shem. So now the enemy knows that the seed of the woman or the seed of the one to come to crush his head is gonna come through the seed of Shem or the seed of Abraham, right? So now we see that Abraham was called by the Most High. He was called by the Most High. And so he answered the call. Then as his relationship developed, the scripture tells us that in Genesis chapter 17, that the Most High formed a covenant with Abraham and the covenant was circumcision. So in Genesis chapter 17, just doing a little recap, in Genesis chapter 17, let's look at uh, uh, verses 9 and we'll uh, just pick it up at verse 9. And Elohim said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant. Now remember, he has a relationship. He answered the call. In Genesis chapter 12, he answered the call. So now this here in chapter 17 is 24 years later because Abraham is now 99 years old. Abraham, the seed of Shem, has been chosen to bring by this Mushiach, the one to come. Very important. Okay? So we see that he says in verse 9, And Elohim said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, uh, therefore, and thy seed after thee, and thy generation. Verse 10, This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you, and thy seed. So this covenant was to be kept not by Abraham only, but his seed and his seed after him. Okay? Every male child among you shall be what? Greek or a circus a mute is the word mute. To, 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 to be circumcised means the cutting. Verse 11, and you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of oath of the covenant between me and you. So notice that the covenant of circumcision is between Abraham's seed, okay? This is in Genesis now. I need to pay attention to this here. In Genesis, notice that who he entered the covenant with. The covenant of circumcision is not with Japheth, it's not with Ham, but it's with the seed of Shem. And it's through the seed of Shem where we get Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Israel, Man, now watch this here. So this covenant is made with Abraham. I ain't gonna go there right now. Made with Abraham. Verse 12, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every male child in your generation. Watch this here. He that is born in a house and bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So everyone had to be circumcised. Verse 13, he that is born in our house and he that is bought with money must need be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for everlasting covenant. So notice that the covenant that was set with Abraham was about, was about the, uh, 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 was the circumcision of the flesh. It means now the Most High has entered into a covenant with Abraham at the age of 99. So what is a covenant? It's, it's, a, it's agreement between two people. I got your back and you got my back. It's a, it's a, it's a pact. It's deeper than what you and I can imagine. So I don't want to teach on that right now, but I just want to show you that, that y'all entered a covenant with nobody else, nobody else but Abraham, his seed. Keep that in mind. So now watch this here. Ah, this story here will take me too long here. I don't want to do that one right there. I want to do that one. Let's go here. So now, so now we have to understand, listen, we have to understand the, the natural first. Don't jump spiritual for me. So natural, Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised. Fellas, how painful was that? How painful was that? Oh yeah, painful. Very painful. So walking in, in a covenant with Yah, it's going to be painful sometimes. That's going to be painful. But remember that when Abraham was circumcised, it said that, 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 that Yah visited him. Chapter 18 said, Yah visited him. Walking with Yah in a covenant does not mean that you're not going to have any pain. Do you hear me? Because circumcision means the cutting away. 
you understand? Circumcision means the cutting away of the foreskin, the deadness in our life. And this is what Abraham did. He left his family and he followed Yah, not knowing, as the writer of Hebrews said, not knowing where he was going, but he obeyed. He, he obeyed. Now watch this here. What does circumcision mean? Let's see. Now remember, first, first the natural, then the spiritual. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 10. Very important we understand these things. So now notice this here. I want you to understand this here. The most high enter a covenant, not with Ham, not with Japheth. So if they wanted to be part of this covenant that the most high established with Abraham, they had to enter to the covenant and be circumcised. They had to. That's the only way to enter into a covenant with the most high God in the ancient world that you had to be circumcised and enter into the community. You could not join the community and not be circumcised. You cannot. Now watch this here. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Watch this here. We're going to read verses. Uh, we'll start at verse 12. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And now, O Israel, notice, he's talking to the Israel, not the Hamites, not the Jesuits, but he's talking to Israel. Why? Because Israel is Jacob's name changed to Israel. For those who don't know that, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Not Israelis, <laughs> Israel. So now he's speaking to Israel. When he's speaking to Israel, he's speaking to all 12 tribes. He's speaking to all the strangers and the sojourners that joined with them. And they became part of Israel. So notice what it says here. Now, O Israel, what does Jehovah thy Elohim require of thee? Yes, the most high required things of us. Not just to believe that Yeshua Hamashiach died, uh, Jesus died. And, well, no, no, no. He does require things of us. Don't let nobody say, oh, you just got to believe and that's it. No, that is some qualification here. What does he require of thee? But to what? Fear. Well, I can teach on these words right here. Fear, Yerah. Fear, Yehovah, thy Elohim. Fear, Yerah. Your Elohim. Walk, Halakha, in his Derek, his ways, and Ahawah, Ahav. Love him. How? And to serve him. They, Yehovah, thy Elohim, with all thy heart, with all thy soul. That's a qualification. Circumcision means nothing if I don't obey. Do you understand? Circumcision means nothing. So I can be circumcised and I be in the camp of Abraham, but I won't obey the rules of the house. What they mean, my circumcision means nothing. The same way that somebody could be baptized in the church, but they don't obey the word of God, they baptism mean nothing. Do you understand? They can be baptized, but don't obey God's word. All they did, my brothers and sisters, just got wet. That's all it did. They just got wet. So circumcision does not save you. Circumcision brings you in the covenant and your obedience, huh? Keep you in the covenant. Show that you are sincere about the covenant. So he said, fear your Jehovah, walk in his ways, and love him and serve him. I'm going to jump down to uh, 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 verse 16. Verse 16. Watch this here. Circumcise, what? Therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff neck. Did you that? Be no more stiff neck. Oh, I know people don't like to hear this here because they want to hear some prosperity stuff. They want to hear about how God's going to bless you and get you a new house and a new car. Listen, this ain't this channel, okay? This ain't, I'm not writing a book saying that your best life is before you. This is not that kind of channel. This is the people that's going to be separated and walking and obeying the commandments of Yah. Because why? We've been justified by his blood. Everybody that's listened to me, if you have trusted in the blood of Yeshua, you've been justified. Now you move to the second stage, which is what? Sanctification process. We all are in sanctification. What is sanctification, Pastor? That means that he's working on us. We all got things going on in our life. He's sanctification. He's working on us. And then at the end, that's glorification. That happens only after, after I die. Resurrection, that's glorification. But notice he says, Circumcise, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff neck. 
Boy, y'all remember uh, Moses kept saying over and over, these people are stiff neck. These people are stiff neck. These people are stiff neck. And that's what I say about my people. Man, I can teach certain things. I'm like, my people are stiff neck. They are stiff neck. They won't listen. They are so caught up in religion. The dog with a man, and they're so stiff neck, would not listen. And Moses continued, continued to say, Oh, these people, these people, these people. So you see here that circumcision, therefore, is the foreskin of your heart. So just as that was painful, as I talked about money, I said, Listen, the older that you wait to be circumcised, physical is going to be painful. Because why? You're going to be thinking about it. How much pain is going to cost you? How much pain is going to hurt? But as a baby, you're not even aware of it. It's just a click and it's over. I don't remember my circumcision. But now he's talking about the circumcision of the heart. Oh, there's some things. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. That continue had to be cut away. And notice that I said Monday, I say that when a surgeon used a circumcision, that knife is sharp. That knife is sharp. It has to be sharp. And so that's why the word of Yah says in Hebrews 4, 12, that the word of Yah is quicker and sharper than any two edged sword. So it's the word of Yah that helps us to cut away. Listen, to cut away the junk in our lives. We need the word of God. So when a person don't sit on a, a good teaching, good teaching, how can he cut away Easter? How can he cut away Christmas? How can he cut away, you know what I'm saying, these pagan holidays? How he knows. He had to sit on a good teaching, good teaching, so he can know you got to cut this out of your life. And sometimes, listen, it's not easy. It's, listen, it's not easy. You've been doing things for years. We've been doing things for years and years. And man, it takes the word of Yah and by his spirit. Hallelujah, by his spirit. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hallelujah. Now, so we see that services of the heart, okay? Jeremiah chapter 4. Let's move a little faster here. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. Now, remember, Jeremiah is talking to the southern kingdom, and they ain't acting right. And Jeremiah is trying to warn them, but they won't listen. That's us. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. He says here, verse 1. If thou will return, O Israel, notice he's talking to Israel, not Japheth, not Ham, not the nation. Yah has a people that call Israel. And the church has not replaced Israel. Now, if thou will return, O Israel, says Jehovah, return unto me. Notice that, return unto me. And if thou will put away thy abomination out of my sight, then shall thou, then shall thou not be removed. So he said, listen, if y'all stop all that pagan worship, y'all stop all that homongering abomination, disgusting things that you're doing in my sight with these Canaanite gods, with all these nations, if you do those things, turn away from those things. He said, Israel, I let you stay in the land. But we did. That's why we're here in America today. Why? Because our fathers did not obey. Mm. And we suffering even to this very day. We still suffering. You know, I, I was thinking earlier. I like, you know, you know, it's it's sad that 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 uh that just maybe is my own personal experience that uh I don't know if I ever told it any anybody this here, but it's like it's sad that the Bible is the only book that you gotta lie if you're gonna teach it. I uh, mean, I, I mean that you really, you get in trouble if you tell the truth, whole nothing but the truth. But I do. But I'm saying, though, it do fend people that when you tell the truth and the whole, the whole truth. Much, listen, with, with, with much learning come much sorrow because you see things and, 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 and you have to teach certain things that we have been lied to. Oh, my goodness, my brothers and sisters, we've been lied to. I mean, we've been lied to, we've been lied to, we've been lied to. So, but if you want to, listen, if you want to know the truth about the word of Yah, just continue to tune in to this site here, to this site. I thank y'all. 
Thank y'all for tuning in. So he said, Israel, put away, if you put away this, your loose living, if you put away these, these abominations, put away these gods of the Canaanites and, and, and all this paganist stuff you're doing, Israel, I'll let you stay in the land. But as you can see again, our people didn't do it. Verse two, and thou shalt swear, and thou shalt swear, Jehovah liveth in truth, in judgment, and righteousness, and the nation shall be, uh, uh, shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall thou glory. Verse three, for thus says Jehovah to the men of Judah, see Judah and Jerusalem, break off the fallen ground and sow not among thorns. Ooh, notice this again. Verse four, circumcise, circumcise what? Yourself, huh? To Jehovah. Okay, circumcise yourself to Jehovah and take away the foreskin of your heart, ye man of Judah. Notice in this verse, he's saying, cut away. Cut away the things in your heart. Do those things that are right in my sight. Listen, I'm telling you, my brother and sister, listen, when you start really looking at the book and start teaching it, man, and, and all the things that you and I have learned I mean, and, and waste so much money and time and energy trying to cut away Christmas, trying to cut away Easter, trying to cut away the unclean food, the abomination things that we have inherited. Man, it's painful. It's painful. For some of us, it's, 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 it's a working process, but I'm telling you, but, but his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Listen, you're not going to be popular when you begin to obey the word of Yah, you're not going to be popular. It demands. It separates you. The truth separates you. You're not going to be popular when you begin to cut these things out of your life. Now, we see that Yah does require things of us. Let's look at something else. So what does the circum circum let's look at what a circumcised heart look like. Let's go to book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, keep in mind, remember, think about the natural, just as it's painful. You cannot tell me that Abraham been circumcised at the age 99, that it wasn't painful. And then, hey, listen, Abraham had, had to circumcise all the men of his house. And I know that when Abraham had a battle and had to uh, go and rescue Lot, it said that Abraham had over 300 men. So Abraham had to circumcise all these men. Mm. Oh, the commitment, the commitment. We don't understand these things. So let's look at this here. Ah, see, I love context. So I can jump at this one verse, but I, I love context so that you can understand what's going on here. Let's go to uh, uh, the Romans chapter 30. And I'm going to pick it up in verse 1. Verse 1, guys. Chapter 30, verse 1. Listen to this here. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whether Jehovah thy Elohim has driven thee. That's why it's coming to my mind, mama. That's why it's coming to my mind. I'm, listen, my eyes are being opened. How? By the Holy Spirit. I'm not making this up. I can go to court and prove what all my doctrine. I'm not making this up. This is the point I'm saying. Once in my life, I can, I can explain what I'm teaching. You might not like it, but I can explain it. So y'all said, listen, you're going to be driven into all these nations. But when it comes to mind, and it shall, and thou shalt call them Call to mind among all the nations where Jehovah thy Elohim has driven it. Call what? Verse 2. And thou shalt return unto Jehovah thy Elohim. That's what I'm doing. That's what we're doing, beloved. We're turning back to his Shabbat. We're turning back to his feast. We're going to let nobody stop us. Hallelujah. Thou shalt return unto Jehovah thy Elohim and shall do what? Obey his voice according to all that I command. Thee this day that thou shalt, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Listen, listen, kids. It's not only, and the kids need to understand, listen, as parents are returning back to Yah, our kids got to turn back too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when, listen, when my son come home from college on a little break 
and uh, 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 he come through Shabbat too. <laughs> he don't get left at home because he in college and, and he up at eight. No, no, no. If you under this roof here, when we go to Shabbat, you go to Shabbat. Amen. Amen. Why? Because Abraham, he said, Abraham, I know you, Abraham. I know, Abraham, you're going to bring your children up in the way of Yah. This is good teaching here. This is a good teaching right here. Verse 3, he said, that then Jehovah the Elohim will turn the captivity, notice this, and have compassion upon thee and, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whether Jehovah the Elohim has scattered thee. That's all. This, this, this is an antidote for us as a people. But they don't want to teach it. Verse 4, if thou be driven from into the outermost part of the heaven, and from then Jehovah the Elohim will gather thee from, from then from the fetch and fetch thee. Verse 5, and Jehovah the Elohim will bring thee into the land which thou father possess, and thou shalt possess it, and he will, and he will do thee good. And multiply thee above thy father. Verse 6. And you watch this here. Be quiet this here. Oh, y'all got to catch this here. Now, the people are supposed to obey. The people are responding. He said, listen, if you do this here, watch this, mama. What, 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 what is it? He said, if you do this here, verse 6, and you hold that Elohim will do what? Circumcise your heart. If you just obey the little things, if you just turn back the thing that you thought was so difficult, all of a sudden, y'all just cut that out of your life. Y'all just cut that out of your life. Hallelujah. Why? Because you begin to turn back to him. You begin to turn back to him. Then notice now, notice, notice that, that at first he said, now you circumcise your heart. But then once he sees us turning back to Torah, he sees us turning back to his feast, his more deed, his Shabbat. Huh? Putting away the abomination things that is disgusted in his eyes. And Yah said, verse 6, that's powerful right there. And Jehovah thy Elohim will circumcise thy heart. Oh, hallelujah. And the, not only your heart, and the heart of thy seed, my sons, to do what? To love Jehovah thy Elohim with all. To love Jehovah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou may live. That's powerful right there. That's powerful right there. Hallelujah. And then if we do this here, listen to what he says in verse 7. He says, and you hold our Elohim will put all the curses upon thy enemy and on them that hate thee, which, which, which what? Which persecute thee. You, do y'all see the verse there? Are y'all reading the same thing I'm reading? This chapter right here is Yah prophetic knowing that we was going to disobey but he was going to scatter us throughout all the nations but then he said listen why are you in the nation why y'all think we just now finding this out the dry bones are coming alive hallelujah the dry bones are coming alive hallelujah the dry bones are coming alive <laughs> Woo! hallelujah mm. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, the word, the word, the word. Thank you, Father, that you did not destroy us, even in our captivity. If the Most High had not been with us in our captivity, we would have been as Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be Yah, the Most High. Hallelujah. Woo. Let's go to Joshua. Joshua chapter 22. Oh, hallelujah. Joshua chapter 22. Notice, now, remember that Moshe has went on to glory. Joshua has brought the people over the Jordan River. Joshua, as a good general, wants to uh, warn the people himself to be obedient. Listen what Joshua says here, okay? We're, we're talking about a circumcised heart. When your heart is circumcised, you don't mind following Torah. I'm going to say it again. When your heart has been circumcised by the Most High, you don't mind following Torah. You don't mind keeping the Shabbat. You don't mind putting away Christmas and Easter and Halloween. You don't mind that. Why? Because now your heart has been circumcised by the Ruach Kadesh. Your heart has been transformed. Your mind has been renewed. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was talking to my wife the other, 
other day. I said, notice how the text said that, therefore, that uh, 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 as he said in Romans, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul said, I urge you, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present yourself as a living and holy sacrifice, which is your reasonable service, right? But verse 2 said, and be not conformed to this world, but be you how? Transform how? By the renewing of your mind. Listen, that's a process. By the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Hallelujah. That's what we're doing right now. Renewing our mind. How can you walk? How can you and I walk in obedience to his word? If we don't know his word. It ain't about believing that Jesus died and rose. That's salvation. But how can you obey him? Huh? How can you obey his divine instruction if you don't know it? It's like a teenager having a car, but don't know, have never read the rule, the book on reading uh, how to drive the car. He don't know the, uh, uh, the traffic laws. He don't know nothing about driving. All he knows is just getting in the car and driving. He, he never took the test. He never seen the book itself. That's a danger child driving a car. Huh? He don't know. He he don't know the rules. Like, okay, like me. One time I ain't even noticed it. I don't I'm I must didn't read it in the book, because I'm sure it's in the book. Years ago I was coming out of the alley, right? And uh uh and it was a police officer over there, so I'm coming out, out of the uh, attic, I mean an alley, and so I turned, and so he jumped behind me and threw on his flashes. I'm thinking like, what I do? Like, I just came out the alley, you know. I mean I'm just Coming from down the alley, you know, a, a shortcut. Well, he told me that when you enter to now, some of you already know this here, but I'm saying I didn't know it, and it ain't it, it ain't the officer's fault. It's my fault because I'm sure it was in the book. But he said that when a car is coming out of any uh, uh, alley and enter to an intersection, that he must turn on his signal light, left or right. Now, some of you probably knew that, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that. What the point I make is that it's in the book. So I didn't try to go before the judge and say, judge, ah, no, no, the judge said, listen, it's your responsibility to read the book. Now, we're all guilty of this here. The feast, the feast of Jehovah has always been in the book. But guess what? We never read the book. The Shabbat has always been there, but we never read the book. Don't eat this and don't eat that is in the book. We never read the book. But now the Most High is waking us up. And now we're like that, that, uh, uh, that eat the older in Acts chapter 8. We asking questions. We're asking questions. We like those in Acts chapter 17. We asking questions. The Bereans, they search the scripture. We search the scripture. We search the scripture. I'm saying to you, listen, hallelujah. You ought to be able, when you study with me, I want you to be able to, to defend the faith. As you say, I write unto you, brothers, that uh, about common salvation. But it need for me to write to you. Why? Because there are certain men unaware, crept into the congregation, ungodly men, huh? Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. So Jew wanted to warn them about apostate. And so when I'm teaching, I'm not teaching the Darwin of men. I'm teaching the Torah. I'm teaching the divine scripture. I'm teaching the same scripture that Yeshua HaMashiach, the prophet and Moses, and all them taught. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. And so I love for my wife, my mother-in-law, and all that, that study with me. Man, I love for you to be able to open up the scripture and verify your doctrine. My question would be to people is like, why do you believe what you believe? And where did you get your belief from? Did you get it from the Bible? Did you get it from TBN? Did you get it from your pastor? You ought to be able to defend the faith. Little simple things like this. Here. Those that have been in and studied with me for a while, you ought to be able to, to defend why we should keep the Shabbat. You ought to be able to defend why we should keep the feast. You ought to be able to defend, okay, why we should eat certain things. You should know where these verses at and let the people read them themselves. If they don't want to do it, that's fine. But you ought to know these things. Why? Because Yahshua said, you shall know the truth, and the truth said what? Make you free. Hallelujah. Joshua said, right? Joshua chapter 22. Watch this here. Ah. Uh,
for the sake of time. What's the verse here? Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. But take diligent heed to do. Now he's talking to the people, which you can read in verse 1 and 2. But take diligent heed to do the commandments and the Torah, which Moses, the servant of Jehovah, charged you to love Jehovah, your Elohim, and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart with all your soul this was joshua telling them listen shema yisrael is loving yah with all thy heart with all thy soul other words with all your being that's all i mean with all your being with all your being so watch this here again a circumcised heart will follow torah a circumcised heart. Once your heart been circumcised by the Ruach Kadesh, you don't mind following Torah. You don't mind following Torah. And let me help people out who don't know don't know what the Torah means. The word Torah in the King James is translated as law, and the Torah in the Bible only means teaching and instruction. So, what is Torah? Is the Father giving His children? teaching and instruction and we as children have to decide if we want to obey our father or not just that simple that's it just that simple now let's go back to bear sheep that is genesis genesis chapter 17 so if a person in the camp of abraham did not want to be circumcised let's see what the word of yah said we got to let the bible be our our, our, our foundation is not what I say, it's what Yah says. So let's say a person to say, Well, Abraham, I want to be in your camp, but I don't want to, I don't want you cutting on me. I don't want to be circumcised. I just want to be in your camp. I just want all the blessings. <laughs> I just want all the blessings in the camp, but I don't want to be circumcised because why? Circumcision means I got to obey. So if circumcision means I got to obey, then what does uncircumcision mean then? Well, let's look at verse 14. Verse 14. And the uncircumcised man, child, who flesh of his foreskin is not what? Circumcised. Circumcised. That soul shall be what? Shall be what? Cut off. Cut off. You see how y'all said? Abraham, he ain't going to benefit from this covenant. He's not going to benefit from the goat milk. He's not going to benefit from the, from the, you know what I'm saying, the benefit for being in the camp, from the protection. Abraham, he's not going to leash out for you. This person has broken the covenant. He cannot. He say, why? This person has broken. He, he shall be cut off from his people. Why? 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 Why is he cut off? Watch this verse right here. Why is he cut off from his people? This is what he said, for he has broken my covenant. Mm. Notice, this is not Abraham's covenant. Yah gave the covenant of circumcision to Abraham. And I show you that circumcision in the natural, then circumcision also in the spiritual by the word of Yah. So when a person decides that he don't want to be uncircumcised, I mean, he don't want to be circumcised, Yah said he's cut off from his people. So Let's bring this uh, 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 back to us in the 21st century. So we keep Torah in here. We we observe the Torah, the word of Yah, to the best of our ability. Somebody come in here and say, well, I don't want to do none of that stuff. But, and then we break bread every Shabbat. We we eat lack, lavish. Thank Yah. Praise the Most High. Hallelujah. Everything kosher. Okay? To the best of our ability. We'll find out later if anything else not. But we're doing our best. And so, uh, so let's say a person comes in and he say, listen, we don't have to do all that stuff. We don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to cut away none of that stuff in our, in our life. Now, listen, this person make it known that they don't want to do none of that. Well, I'm going to tell him like, y'all said, listen, you cut off, bro. You, you cut off. You're not even willing to go through the sanctification process and say, listen, he's working on me, man. Uh, help me pray, pray for me. You know, I need, I didn't know I need to turn. I, I, I didn't, you didn't know any of that. But you made a public statement like, listen, y'all can do all that stuff y'all want to, but I ain't doing it. Then you want to be able to eat our chicken and our, you know, then our, our beans. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you can't make a public case like that. Say, you said that you don't want to be the covenant with the people of the covenant. 
Then I only got one word for you. Two words, probably. Hit the door. Can't do that. You're cut off from his people. Why? Because he had broken your covenant. Okay? He has broken his covenant. Why? Uncircumcised person, what he said, I don't want to keep covenant. I don't want to keep covenant. Now, let's look at something else. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. We're going to look at verses 25 and 26. Jeremiah chapter 9. Y'all all right with that? Show me some love out there. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to the most high. Jeremiah chapter 9. Verse 25. Now, let's look at what these verses said. Because, because Judah is bragging about their circumcision. But we're going to see in this text. But, but his circumcision don't mean nothing because he's not obeying. And that's why I told you earlier that you can brag. By, uh, you basically can brag how old you was when you, when you were baptized. But your baptism don't mean nothing if you're not obeying. All I'm going to say it again. All you did was just got wet. So a person who, who say he's bragging on his circumcision, I'm Abraham's seed, but he's not obeying Torah, all he did was just got cut. <laughs> That's all it is. He just got cut. Circumcision means you got to obey. Now watch this here. Uh, chapter 9, I said, right? Chapter 9. Let, let, let me get that. Chapter 9, verse 25 and 26. Behold, the days come. Now remember, he's talking to Judah. Says Jehovah, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. What he's saying? They cut, but they're not obeying. It's what Paul said. They have a form of godliness, but denying the power. From such, turn away. Again, I'm going to read it again. Behold, the day comes, said Jehovah. Okay, y'all pretending, he said, listen, the day coming. Behold, the day come, says Jehovah, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. You professing one thing, but you're doing something else. Verse 26, Egypt and Judah, Edom, the children of Arm and Moab, and all them that are in the uttermost corner, that dwell in the wilderness, for all these nations, they're what? They're uncircumcised, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised. Y'all say, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. So notice, there are people, just as there was people in the camp in the days of our fathers, they had the physical circumcision, but their heart wasn't right. So y'all say, I'm coming to get them. And we got a lot of people like that in the Messianic community. Yeah, I'm talking about us. I thought the Messianic at large. They gave it the right name, Messi. Messianic. And so we got a lot of people. We have a, a lot of form of godliness. We can talk the talk. We can say all these things, but our heart ain't right. Our heart ain't right. We got to be circumcised. We have to be truly cut away things. Got to. So Israel, this is what he said. Y'all say, I'm coming for you. You better get your heart right. That's what he said. I'm coming for you. You better get your heart right. Mm -mm -mm. He's trying to teach us here. I'm going to show you something else. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to show you what also what circumcision means. It also means, it can mean that a person does not have a relationship with Yah. So because he doesn't have a relationship with him, it means that he does not have a covenant relationship. And because Yah, you don't have a covenant relationship with Yah, he don't have to protect you. Because why? You're not in a covenant with him. Why would he want to protect you when you're not in a covenant with him? Watch this here. Let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. You know the story, David and Goliath. And they are up against the Philistine. The boy is bad. They up to fight. And Goliath was a champ. Now watch this here. I want you to catch this here. Remember, circumcision means in a covenant. Not being in a circumcision means that you're not in a covenant. Just that 
just that important. And you're going to see right here, David understood what it means to be in the covenant. And you and I have to understand what it means to be in a covenant. So as David, as Goliath is just challenging, he's challenged Israel every day coming out. David come out one day and say, what's going on here? Look what it says in verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champ, the Philistine, Agat, Goliath by name, the army of the Philistines, and spoke according to the same words, and David heard them. Hallelujah. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were so afraid. Notice that these people have a circumcised heart, but they don't understand their God. They don't understand being in a covenant. If David understands being in this covenant, watch how David understands. They say, David heard it. Verse 25. And the man of Israel said, have you seen? Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to the fire Israel as he came up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father house free in Israel. Tax free. Verse 26, David spoke to the man that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? Watch what David said. Who is this what? Who is this what? What? Uncircumcised Philistine. Do you hear what David said? This guy ain't got no covenant. He ain't got no protection with the God of Israel. David understood. This covenant. David understood that when you are in the covenant with the most high, you are protected. You keep his covenant. Watch this. Oh, thank you, brother. Watch this. And the, the scripture that came to my mind, uh, it says that the wicked flee when nobody chase them. But the righteous is bold is a lion. Watch this here. David has no armor on. His brothers them got on armor fighting. But they running. From the battle. David has no armor on. Why? Because he realized that the most high is his protection. Oh, y'all better hear what I'm saying. He realized that the most high is his protection. He remembered that the most high said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, Abraham, I am thy shield. I am thy shield and thy exceeding reward. Boy, if the most high is your shield, what can touch you? What can touch you? See, you, listen, you might be in a situation right now. All fierce dots coming around you, people shooting things at you. Remember, Israel, that Jehovah is the shield. And remember, those that seem to be having their armor on, but when the battle comes, they run it. But you understand that you're in a divine covenant with the most high. I ain't afraid of nobody. I ain't afraid of nothing around here. Hallelujah. Because why? I hear what the Messiah say. Don't, don't be afraid of him who can kill the body but can't touch the soul. Hallelujah. Listen, the fear of man is a trap. But David knew that Yah was his arm. Yah is going to do this for him. Because why? David will iterate what happened in his past, how the Most High delivered him out of this here. And so David understood that this guy is uncircumcised he's not keeping torah hallelujah and i'm keeping torah hallelujah david understood that that's why i can have that's why i can have confidence and that what the most high has said to me he has promised and he shall bring it to pass and this listen this ain't even boasting listen because i got the king of the universe on my side everybody can forsake me as long as I got him, I promise you. I don't want people to, to leave. You know what I'm saying? I don't want people to, you know, to forsake me or whatever. I'm just using it as an example. But listen, I'm saying that with him, I can overcome. With him, I can lift my head again. He is my shield. He's my rock. Do you understand? Do you understand? That, listen, you don't know what you can go through until you're in it. And then that's when his grace shows up. Do y'all hear me? You Listen, you think that you can't go through something, but when you find yourself in it, that's when his grace show up. Hallelujah. You don't need grace 
in a situation that you're not going through. It's only when grace, when you're in a situation, you say, whoo, I don't know how I got out of that. I don't know how, man. I can tell you how you got out of it, by grace. By grace. Hallelujah. My beloved, I'm going to stop right here. We'll pick it up. Hallelujah. We'll pick it up uh, if the most high say the same. Uh, part two of the circumcision of our heart. Uh, the circumcision of the, uh, is the sign of the covenant, part two. But I want to thank you for tuning in. I want you to understand that David, what David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Meaning, listen, he has no covenant. Let's hear the words of the prophet that said, Israel, circumcise therefore the four skins of your heart. Remember that if we obey his word, remember, if you and I obey his word, mm, that he said, I will circumcise. Who I will circumcise your heart. Why? I need him to do that. Why? Because, uh, listen, there are some things in my life, listen, that I need him to cut off. I need some things. See, I, I, I continue to need the word to cut things off. By his grace is sufficient. And, and I pray this evening right now, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, that those who are struggling and need, need his grace, to be sufficient, I pray that you will trust. Listen, listen, listen. I pray that you will trust Yah. If you're walking in his word, and as I read in Deuteronomy, that if you begin to return back to him, return back to him, and he said that, then he said, then I, I will circumcise your heart. So don't, don't put yourself down in your journey because we all are in a journey. But I want you to know that you're in a covenant. If you're obeying Yah, the most high, to the best of your ability, all of a sudden that, that, that thing that used to hold you back, that thing that, that was hard to cut away, all of a sudden, one day is not there. It's incredible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a, I'm a living witness. And so I want to thank y'all for tuning in. If the most high say the same, we'll pick this back up Monday. Listen, guys, tune in this Shabbat. We have a brother, uh, 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 Pastor JD is, is going to be teaching. Amen. So we got some awesome teachings coming up. And so uh, uh, tune in. Keep us in prayer. Uh, we got Passover coming up. So we just bless y'all. We thank y'all for tuning in today. May y'all bless thee and keep thee. May y'all make his face shine upon thee and be glorious to thee. May y'all lift up the country upon thee, O Israel, and give thee peace. May you hold us for all the chaos in your life. In the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Amen and Amen. I pray for my mother-in-law. I know that uh, that Yah is continuing to heal her, continue to restore her uh, body, continue to heal her legs, amen, that there'll be no sickness, no pain, hallelujah, that any fluid, there'll be no fluid build up. The muscles will begin to grow back. The bones will begin to grow stronger. Hallelujah, mother-in-law, just continue to walk and serve him. Hallelujah, in your pain. Hallelujah, and continue to call upon his name. Continue to ask him to restore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for any of those that, that's out there right now, Father, that's still in there, in pain right now, Father. Those that, hallelujah, hold on, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, I want to pray for those who right now, Father, in their journey. How, Father, this is not a, a, a easy journey, Father. I want to pray that your grace will be with those who are uh, dealing with difficult uh, with their family, Father. Uh, that their family can understand why they are going this way. Uh, their family is misunderstanding them. I pray, Father, that you will give them the strength, Father. That, Father, I I, I, I know they seem like they are standing or uh, walking by themselves and, and they are long, Father. But let them know, Father, that you are standing with them, Father. So I'm asking that your grace will be with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And those who are who are who are ill in their body, listen, listen, listen. Remember that the scriptures say that Yahshua Hamashiach, he's the same. He doesn't change. The blood of Emmanuel, it doesn't change. He still can heal. Hallelujah. He still can heal. He still can heal. James said there be any sick among you. Let them call for the elders. And, and, and he shall lay hands on them. If, if they have sinned, they shall be healed. A lot of our illness is, is because of sin. But listen, confess your sins. Don't hold on to these things. So I want to thank y'all for tuning in. 
Let me see uh, a couple of people I can get some shout out to. Oh, I see my uh, senior pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor John. Hallelujah. That's my spiritual father. Hallelujah. My spiritual father. I was just calling you the other day, just checking on you, just seeing how things going. Thank you for tuning in. I see my mother-in-law here. Dara's here. I see my wife here. Charlene, Kenna, y'all. I thank y'all for tuning in. Listen, guys, we're going to have an awesome Shabbat. The Most High is doing things. He's bringing his people together. Remember that we are the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham. No doubt of that. And he will bring us together. And like the woman at the well, no matter where we disagree at, we know that when he comes, he will set everything together. My beloved, my brothers and sisters, I love y'all. Thank you for tuning in. If you love this teaching, post it, share it with your family and friends. Shalom.